tuberculosis. By using cutting-edge technology, she was given a windpipe transplant with tissue grown from her own stem cells. As Fergal Parkinson reports, the technique could revolutionize the way doctors carry out organ transplants in the future. Able to breathe once more, Claudia Castillo recovers in hospital. Four months on from the operation, her new windpipe has so far still avoided the normal rejection process. That's because, in this pioneering operation, doctors used her own stem cells to make her body believe the windpipe was her own. After suffering from tuberculosis, Claudia's airway became damaged. She couldn't breathe properly and risked losing her left lung. So, in a world first, Spanish doctors replaced her damaged airway with a new one, grown from Claudia's own stem cells. Doctors removed a breathing tube from a dead woman and used chemicals to strip away the existing cells. Stem cells were then taken from Claudia's hip, lungs and nose and flown to Bristol in the United Kingdom where scientists grew them to create a new windpipe. Surgeons then replaced the damaged windpipe with a new one and Claudia's lung began working normally again. This procedure has signalled a significant medical breakthrough with researchers and scientists from the UK, Italy and Spain playing a key role. It's a major uh, achievement in the history of medicine, but especially for the patient, because uh, uh, as a young uh, lady and a young mother, she was unable to do her uh, mother duties and social work and family work, and now she is able to do it and uh, um, without expecting um, at uh, long term um, any significant compromise of this situation and of the implanted uh, graft. I wanted to feel completely well and be able to do normal things like going to work and be with my children. Of course, I was very frightened, but I knew that I would get better in the end. And of course, it turned out well. It's now hoped that this technique can be used around the world and within the next few years, bowels, bladders or even hearts could be grown in the lab, bringing new hope to millions. Fergal Parkinson, Al Jazeera. Well, for more on this, we're now joined live from Pittsburgh in Pennsylvania by Dr. Burhan Gharaibi. He is a re research assistant professor with the Stem Cell Research Center at the University of Pittsburgh. Uh, doctor, looking at this new discovery, how much of a milestone for medicine is it really? Uh, this is really a great, uh, um, a great story and a great milestone. Uh, from uh, a couple of uh, standpoints, from a medical standpoint, this is uh, one step where the immunity of the body against the transplanted organ is bypassed by uh, inserting uh, or transplanting an organ that has been uh, fed the cells of the person. So basically the person is not going to have an immunity against uh, this transplanted organ. Uh, the other uh, point of view is that this is involving more than one center and more than one country. So this is really revolutionizing this technology where uh, now the distance is not going to be a barrier. And uh, as you can see, it's a Colombian patient who had the uh, cells uh, or the bioreactor performed uh, in England and the work done in Spain using a, an Italian technology. So this is really a great milestone uh, uh, for stem cell biologists and for therapists of uh, many disciplines. And some are calling it uh, the transplant revolution. Where does it go from here? Does it lead to other stem cell related uh, transplants? Oh, absolutely. It's, it's going to affect the uh, transplantation of other organs and also it's going to affect the field of tissue engineering where uh, now experts are going to start emulating uh, this technique using uh, polymers. So not necessarily using uh, uh, transplanted organs that are donated from uh, dead persons because these are always in shortage, but they are going to uh, replicate this technology using something that they can build in the lab. So um, in this particular example, they might uh, rebuild something that this trachea using polymers that are not going to be rejected by the body. There's always been a lot of controversy, though, surrounding stem cell research and the ethics uh, of this particularly. Will this, do you think, help, um, help persuade those skeptics that this is a needed way of uh, progressing in medicine? Uh, yes, absolutely. They, uh, they, uh, this, uh, the ethical dilemma of using embryonic stem cells or uh, fetal stem cells. 
uh, is always going to be there, and uh, th this is going to be a, a, a political, ethical issue for a long time. Uh, however, using the adult-derived cells where the patient would donate uh, his own cells to cure uh, some disease in his own body, in this case, uh, the trachea or the windpipe, is going to create a solution. Um, the, the, the adult stem cells, uh, as you know, are, uh, are obtained from, from the adults who are going to consent giving those cells. So either they are donated by an adult or used by the adult to treat his own diseases is going to create a big solution. Dr. Borhan Gharaibe, thank you very much for joining us. To Mauritania now, where the new military government is intensifying efforts to hunt down Al-Qaeda fighters. The Saharan country has uh, seen increasing bloodshed in attacks by fighters who simply fade into Mauritania's harsh countryside. Nicole Johnston has more. A fortress in the mountains, these desert crags are fringed by the Western Sahara. Isolated and barren, a perfect hiding ground for Al-Qaeda fighters.